start off Elite Premier's series on navigation by NDB and VOR. I'm going to give a, a quick overview of the various uh, aircraft's instrumentation, uh, both the uh, ADF and VOR setups. An important thing to uh, be able to do, obviously, is to find frequencies, and uh, one way is through Plan G. It's very handy. You can see here we're uh, sitting at San Antonio International and uh, pointing right at the Alamo NDB and uh, to our approximately 2 o'clock the San Antonio VOR. And you can see that the information provides uh, provided includes the uh, frequencies. You can also uh, hover over the airport and see other information, runways, ILS frequencies, uh, so on and so forth. Plan G is a very handy thing, although there are other sources, uh, skyvector.com uh, and within FSX itself. Uh, so uh, you know, you pick what you like, uh, but this is a very handy uh, uh, add-on and it is free. We'll take a look at the uh, Cessna 172 first. You can see here I'm using the 2D panel for a little clarity. Uh, the ADF and dual uh, VORs, uh, VOR1 uh, equipped with a glide slope, and then VOR2, uh, the uh, VOR alone. Each of these instruments right now is in the off position, indicating there is no signal being received. Uh, it's very important to recognize this because uh, as you can see on the two VOR heads, it appears that we're uh, exactly on course. If we tune the ADF, um, the needle goes from its off horizontal position to pointing at the um, Alamo NDB. Uh, as you recall from the shot at Plan G shown a little earlier, uh, we're pointing right at it. We're looking right towards it, so obviously the needle is going to point up. Again, the off position horizontal with the uh, arrow pointing to the left in this case. And if we turn it back on, we'll see the arrow again point uh, straight ahead at the uh, NDB. And tune the uh, VORs uh, and notice right now uh, the uh, red and white uh, flags that indicate no signal being received. Uh, the top uh, VOR, VOR1, has one for both nav and glide slope. When we uh, tune to the San Antonio VOR, we see that uh, the VOR comes alive and the nav uh, off flag changes to a triangle, in this case pointing up or to uh, the VOR, indicating we are uh, set uh, in, in the uh, two half of the compass rows of the VOR. Uh, turning number two on, VOR number two, you see the same thing happen. The off flag changes to a triangle uh, and the triangle pointing up indicating that our omni bearing selector is somewhere in the two portion of uh, the compass rows for the San Antonio VOR. And again here we sit uh, uh, pointing at the Alamo NDB uh, with the San Antonio VOR being almost uh, uh, straight north for us. Make the uh, image a little larger so we can see. Uh, here's the uh, um, the VOR and if we kind of draw a mental line to it we see it's uh, just slightly off of due north and if we turn our omni bearing selector we see that we're pointing at about a, a 355 maybe 354 degree uh, once the needle is centered. You might have noticed that the glide slope uh, flag is still indicating the glide slope is off that's because this is a VOR not in ILS and of course no glide slope is available. This is the Baron 58 again uh, using the 2D cockpit. Uh, we show that the uh, uh, VOR1 here is a horizontal situation indicator uh, type of display and VOR2 which is a radio uh, compass type 
of display or radio magnetic indicator uh, with a uh, with a, uh, an arrow that points to uh, the VOR although VOR references are based on the radial from so we are on the approximately the 174 radial of the San Antonio VOR the NDB points to the Alamo NDB and uh, NDB's uh, directions are referred to the bearing to that tuning off the NDB uh, frequency puts the uh, ADF needle in a horizontal position here with the arrow to the right. This indicates the off position for this particular aircraft. Note the nav flag for VOR1. When that red flag is up, that means VOR1 is not receiving any signal. And the VOR2 uh, position for uh, being off is almost the opposite of what we have right here. Uh, the needle uh, points at a north of east, south of west position with the uh, arrow pointing uh, down and to the left. This is the King Air, very similar to the setup on the Baron. Here uh, both the uh, VOR2 and the NDB are off. Notice here though that the off position for VOR2 uh, in, in the uh, King Air is horizontal, just like the uh, NDB. Uh, the VOR1 is also off. Uh, here there's a little bit of different uh, setup. No uh, ID is shown in the VOR1 and there is no center piece of the arrow. That indicates that uh, VOR1 is also not receiving any signal. Here we turn it on. San Antonio VR SAT is identified and just below it is the DME distance uh, from the VOR. Also note that the center uh, section of the arrow has now appeared slightly off-center, but uh, it's there. Uh, we also have uh, um, NDB for VOR1 and VOR2 in a separate display. Right now VOR2 is off, now it's on. Uh, it's now displaying, of course, the same information since we're tuned to the same VOR. And notice that the radio magnetic indicator needle, the double green needle, uh, is now pointing to the San Antonio VOR. And if we tune the ADF to the frequency of the uh, Alamo NDB, uh, you'll see the ADF needle point forward again, uh, pointing towards the Alamo NDB. Uh, approximately the 305 bearing. A little stubborn here, it doesn't want to change frequencies for me. And there it's, there. it's on pointing towards the uh, the NDB. Again, the bearing to an NDB versus the radial from a VOR. It, the correct way to reference your position relative to those nav aids. Here's a quick look at the Elite Premier Virtual uh, version of the uh, King Air. We've also modified the flight characteristics in this aircraft. It flies differently than the stock version. This is the CRJ700 and we have an electronic flight information type system uh, uh, on the uh, regional jet. This has also been modified. Uh, this particular one has different map modes that can be selected uh, and uh, includes a moving map uh, type display. Uh, zoom in a little bit to show you some of the detail. And uh, this this display can be turned on and off in into various modes. You see here the arc with the map and the map alone uh, and then the compass row style alone. When the VORs are, are active you see the identifier. You also see the distance, uh, DME distance from them. VOR1 is also displayed under the primary flight display uh, for the convenience of the pilot. This is handy for instrument landings. You don't have to glance to the right. Keep your uh, head straight forward. When the VRs are off, the ID goes away. Notice here though that the center portion of the needle uh, is still there, a little different than some displays. Off for VOR2 uh, also shows no ID and rests in the north of uh, east, south of west position similar to other radiomagnetic indicators. You can change the function, a uh, little uh, buttons over on the left here uh, to show on one or two the VOR 
the uh, NDV or off. Uh, likewise for needle 2, the double needle uh, can also uh, be tuned to the ADF or turned off altogether. Again, the buttons are at the left over here on this side of the aircraft. Here's the Elite Premier Virtual version of the CRJ700. Also has modified flight characteristics and based on what comparisons we can make, uh, appears to fly more like the real thing than the stock FSX version. And finally, we'll look at the uh, the Boeing 737-800, here's the Elite Premier virtual version of that aircraft. Give you a little look at it before we look at the instrument panel. Instrument panel is similar to that of the regional jet. Uh, the electronic uh, flight information system, this is the default or initial setting of the map when you first uh, start up the aircraft. But you can also change the modes here. Notice now the VOR1 and VOR2 indicators are in the lower left and lower right corners. We know that currently neither VOR is tuned to an active frequency because there is no ID under the VOR1 or VOR2. And turning the VOR1 on, we see SAT appear. We also see the backup uh, needle uh, pointing towards the VOR. And since we've moved the uh, cursor, the things are centered. You can also change the style of display, VOR uh, or approach style. And you can display the arc or a full compass rose style. Here's uh, VOR1, the uh, needle uh, center section is near the center as it was before. And uh, VOR2 is off and that is its off position almost exactly what you might expect if it were on. So again, don't be fooled. Here we've turned it on. You see SAT appear in the lower right corner along with the DME distance and notice that the arrow actually turned around. You can switch uh, the backup from uh, uh, VOR to NDB uh, but it only tunes NDB1 uh, here. If you have a, this uh, setup equipped for more than one NDB uh, you will not get it on the backup. You can switch the needle 1 and needle 2 to either the off position or to tune in the ADF. On the 737-800 those switches are located on the instrument panel, the left portion of the uh, upper header of that panel. If you are not receiving an NDB uh, signal the ADF needle will rest horizontal, similar to the other aircraft we looked at. Be aware that in some cases you may be tuned to a frequency and that um, facilities in indicator letters are shown, uh, but no signal is actually being received. This is a characteristic of certain systems where they will identify the, the nearest facility at that frequency even if they're out of range at the time. Back to the uh, Cessna 172 just for one additional point. Obviously no uh, letter indicators anywhere uh, on this type of aircraft so you should always tune in to um, the audio portion to get the Morse code identifier. Uh, for the ADF it's AN and for the VORs in this case it's SAT. We don't hear it on this recording. Uh, it, that sound doesn't come through, uh, but uh, you can check this and should check this to verify you are on the correct fre frequency and also receiving the correct facility. Come and visit us at uh, www.elitepremiervirtual.com. We have a lot of uh, good information available uh, for pilots interested in all sorts of things. Uh, we have a flight training section and are happy to give additional information uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis or group basis. Our uh, information includes some uh, ATC communication basics, IFR flight planning, reading approach plates, and additional information on VOR navigation, 
using the ADF, ADF uh, navigation, and uh, non-precision approaches, which in this era uh, is one of the principal uses of VOR uh, or ADF navigation.